I've wanted to start a Formula One YouTube channel for years, but it was always one of those things that was waiting until things are perfect. Then it hit me, if you're waiting until things are perfect, you'll never really start. So here I am in my loft as a newly married man with notes on my phone and a mini mic, and we're just going to sit here and talk about Formula One because I think everyone needs more Formula One in their life with a guy they can relate to who is just another normal person who wants to put out Formula One content because he's in love with the sport. I once put out a video a long time ago on a channel that can no longer be found about Daniel Ricciardo and if I thought he'd won a championship at McLaren. Obviously, being a Daniel Ricciardo fan, I said yes, and I was clearly mistaken about that. So, for our first video on this channel, I think I've decided to look back on that prediction and see what's really gone wrong with Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo left Red Bull in 2018, and if you listened to our last podcast, I said it was the very first silly season move that I experienced in my young Formula One fandom career, and the 2018 Monaco Grand Prix was the first race I ever watched, so Daniel Ricciardo winning, it was pretty easy to become a Daniel Ricciardo fan, so high school Justin was pretty crushed by the news that his favorite driver was going to be leaving his favorite team and going to what was probably his least favorite team for a while. So it was tough to root for Renault for two years, but I did it because I was a Daniel fan. And rumors were all around of why Daniel left Renault. His public statement was he needed a new challenge. Some people said he wanted more money or he was scared to face Max Verstappen. Red Bull was giving Max Verstappen preferential treatment, even that Daniel wasn't confident in the Honda project going on to next year. Either way, he left Red Bull, went to Renault in 2019, and 2019 was kind of like a weird year. I didn't have F1 TV, so I wasn't watching all the races. I was just seeing highlights, so maybe I'm not the guy to talk about 2019, but it seemed like Renault took a step back in 2019 from the trajectory they were on in 2018, but Daniel still had some success with the car. He beat Nico Hulkenberg pretty comprehensively. The result that stands out to me is the P4 that he got in Italy that year, but there wasn't really anything to to show that Renault was on the up and up and that he had made the right career move, but he hadn't done anything to tarnish his reputation either. He beat Nico Hulkenberg, who was really well regarded at that time. And then going into 2020, the season got canceled, obviously, which would end up being delayed. Uh, and it was announced that he was going to McLaren, and I was like, this move is a slam dunk. Obviously, I was hoping that he was going to go to Ferrari instead of Carlos Sainz, but either way, it made perfect sense to go to McLaren. They were switching power units. They were a team that seemed more in the up and up. I was thrilled about this. And then the 2020 season happened. 2020, to this day, is probably my favorite season of Formula One that I've watched. It was my first one with F1 TV. I have fond memories of being in my college apartment watching Formula One that year. And Daniel Ricciardo is just consistent. That's probably why it was my favorite. I could turn it on any session, qualifying or the race. Daniel was P4, P5, P6 every week. It was awesome. He got two podiums. Uh, he finished P5 in the point standings, which was better than his last year at Red Bull. Um, and so I thought it was only going up when he was going to move to McLaren. I think I was with a lot of people who predicted him to beat Lando Norris the next year. I thought he was going into his prime. He was driving his best at the right time. I really thought that McLaren was going to be a success. And so when he moved to McLaren, the 2021 year started, like things weren't that bad. I think people like look back on the McLaren years of Daniel Ricciardo and being like, man, those were terrible. And you're right. I mean, they weren't great for sure. But 2021 started off fine. I mean, he beat Lando Norris in qualifying in Bahrain and then wasn't that far off on the race, said he had some damage. That was fine. The next race in Imola, kind of the same thing. He finished sixth. He was still up there with the Ferraris. Like, things were good. Everything was fine. I mean, I'm getting a phone call. What the frank is going on? All right, uh, phone call over. So we're back. 2021 started, as I was saying, and things were okay. Beat Lando Norris in qualifying and had some good results at the beginning of the year. Things were looking okay. And then I had this slump where he was for sure off the pace of Lando, but brother was finishing P7, P8, P9, like still getting points. And then the second half of the season, 
things really took a turn and looked better. He got that win at Monza. He had the two P4s, the one at Belgium from qualifying, and then the one at Russia in the rain. The performance that really stands out to me was the U.S. Grand Prix that year. He finished P5, beat one of the Ferraris, comprehensively beat Lando Norris over that weekend. And I was like, man, you know, maybe going into 2022, he'll have that rebound. It's looking like he's getting on the car, new regulations. He'll have influence over it. Things will be great. 2022 starts, clearly I am wrong. And something happened that I think a lot of people forget about is that Daniel Ricciardo got COVID at testing in 2022. So not only did he get less time in the new car and the new regulations, but also any changes that got made from that testing was more done to suit Lando Norris's needs than Daniel Ricciardo's needs. And I think that put him behind the eight ball right away at the start of the year. But just 2022 as a whole, not a great year for McLaren. The team got worse. The car got worse. It was clear that the relationship between Daniel and McLaren was a little bit strained. You could see on Daniel's face in interviews in the paddock around the garage, he had lost his confidence in that car. He couldn't understand what was happening. He was trying to change his driving style. No setup was working. And once he lost his confidence that much, there was really no way to save him. So clearly, I was pretty sad that he wasn't going to be on the grid in 2023, but when they announced his return to Red Bull, I was like, this is awesome. He's back in the Red Bull family. Praise God for that. You know, we're still going to get to see him around. Maybe there's a way he can get back on the grid in 2024 if Sergio Perez has a bad year. Crazy things happen. He ends up on the grid for 2023, replacing Nick DeVries two races before the summer break. Summer break happens. He comes back. We're ready to go breaks his wrist, womp womp, out for a couple more races, comes back, I get to see him at the U.S. Grand Prix, which was great, way better experience than seeing him in the McLaren in 2022, that was just, that was depressing, Mexico happens, gets the P4 and qualifying, that whole deal, so things are looking up for Daniel Ricciardo going into 2024, and so the question has to be asked, will he bounce back from the setback that he had in his time at McLaren? Obviously, I'm going to say yes. You guys know this, being a Daniel Ricciardo fan, based on things I've said in the past. I'm going to say yes, but this time I think there's more evidence for it being a yes than there was evidence for him going to win a championship at McLaren. The new Cash App RB will be a car that he's more familiar with. Obviously, there is a lot of talk of it being a car that uses as many Red Bull parts as possible. If you think back a couple years to 2020 and 2021, is when the AlphaTauri was mainly like a second Red Bull, and that was some of the most successful years that AlphaTauri had in recent memory. They won a race in 2020 with Pierre Gasly, got another podium in 2021 with Pierre Gasly, and so the team was having success in those years where they were really taking a lot of parts from Red Bull. They stopped having success when they tried to design their own car, and higher ups at Red Bull said, it's time to go back, you guys are going to use Red Bull parts again, and so it's likely that this car, that uh, not AlphaTauri, that Cash App RB has this next year is very familiar to the RB19. The RB19 is a car that Daniel Ricciardo is very familiar with. He spent a lot of time in the simulator doing work with that car for Red Bull this past year as their third driver. And he also got to drive it at Silverstone in the tire test that led to him being promoted to be an Alfa Tauri for the second half of last year. And so I think if the car is like the car that Daniel Ricciardo drove, then he's going to feel right at home in that car. It's going to be a car that suits his driving style, one that he's familiar with. And I think... Even if he barely beats Yuki Tsunoda over the course of the season, I think he'll be back in the Red Bull. I think Red Bull want Daniel Ricciardo to be back in the Red Bull. I don't see any reason to believe that Sergio Perez will turn his performances around. And so I think it's very likely that we see Daniel Ricciardo in a Red Bull for 2025. Obviously, there's been some crazy Formula One news today that Lewis Hamilton is leaving Mercedes. And it was rumored that Daniel Ricciardo was on Mercedes' shortlist in 2018 to replace Valtteri Bottas if he didn't resign. Um, So maybe there's a chance there that something could happen for 2025 if Daniel Ricciardo performs well, but I still think it's more likely that he ends up in the Red Bull. I think things would be different for Daniel this time in Red Bull. I think he would be happy to just be finishing his career there. I think he'll be a great second driver to Max. I think he'll be closer than Sergio was, and if it's anything like 2018, I think Red Bull would have a lot of success, and I think they might even have less drama than they did last time. 
But that's my thoughts from a guy sitting in a chair with notes on his phone who really is a Daniel Ricciardo fanboy. I'll admit it. So I want to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments down below or head over to our Instagram and social medias to let us know how you think Daniel Ricciardo will do this year in the Cash App RB, what you think went wrong in his time in McLaren, and if he'll ever be back in Red Bull and what you think will happen there. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next time. Peace.